welcome back. Before we get into today's video inside the shop, we've got some big news. We've got some big news. If you guys know, new shop. We've been updating you guys, but today is a big day, at least, maybe not for some of you. Michael, today's a big day, right? Or was a big day? The event has already happened. Huge, huge, huge. We passed our rough electrical inspection, which is a big relief. Uh, again, maybe not for some of you guys, but we did do a lot of electrical work inside the new shop, and today we passed our rough inspection, which means that we can finally close up the walls, insulate, and put the steel up. So that will be happening very, very soon. But wanted to keep you guys updated because that's where we've been uh, for the last week or so. We've just been hiding out inside the new shop, getting the electrical done. So we're past that. Michael is working on uh, just one of the last little details, something that we're not gonna have access to inside the walls. How's it going up there, buddy? It's a, it's a real flattering shot of you, let me tell you what. That tool belt looks, tool belt looks pretty official, my guy. So we got lights going up right there. But anyway, boys, that is not what we are up to today. We are going back inside the shop, as you guys probably saw. We have got the 2015, formerly Alley Struck Greg's uh, new play truck. Uh, we are going to be doing some work on that beast, this beast, today inside the new shop. We have got, what's up Dawson, Bye. We have got some ARP head studs because you know, there, there's this switch inside this thing. It goes one through five and you know, Greg has been driving it quite a bit and we can't seem to stop turning up that little knob. So. What happens when you turn up that little knob, which may have to do with some power increases potentially, uh, possibly, is number one, your transmission will hate you, which will fix that. But number two, your head gasket will probably hate you very shortly after that. And, you know, we've been racking up some miles on this unit. It's got, uh, I think we're up to, I don't know if it'll show it. Maybe not. There we go. Oh, 14,000. We're actually almost due for an oil change, but we want to keep our head gasket happy. We want to keep our head gasket fresh. And, uh, you know, doing head studs definitely helps that. Now, that kind of gets into a whole topic conversation of how to install head studs a certain way. Normally on a higher mileage truck, uh, you would basically do a whole new entire head gasket. You'd pull the cylinder head off, you'd put a new head gasket on there, you'd deck the uh, surface of the cylinder head to make sure you have a good, true, flat surface. I have done this before in the past, some people have done it on such a low mileage truck. We are not gonna be doing it that way. Again, I am not recommending you do, the, do it this way. I am taking the inherent risk myself by doing it this way, but I have done it before in the past on lower mileage trucks without really having an issue and it does it will it will and does help so what we've got like i said arp head studs we are going with 625s again another huge topic discussion arp 2000s 625s the cheap boys the expensive boys we usually normally always use the expensive boys because I like to do things once and I know I can reuse those down the road multiple times, which we will be using them multiple times because we also have later plans down the road to do something different with uh, the cylinder head, stuff like that. So we're gonna be using the 625 boys and uh, we're gonna be doing the head studs one at a time. And we'll get into that. It's been a little while since we have done any sort of kind of like head stud, valve spring, uh, push rod talk. So we're gonna get into it today a little bit, but we are doing head studs on there to try and make sure that, uh, you know, my right foot doesn't happen to prematurely, you know, pop a head gasket. We don't, we don't want that around here. So we're gonna do head studs to kind of prolong that. So we'll get into it, but that's what we're up to today. Boys, while she's fresh, while she's uh, still intact, good, that's what we're up to. <clears throat> Sir, do you remember how to do this? You know, it's been a while. It's been, it's 
been a it's been a hot minute. I think I I think I can figure it out. I'm gonna have to watch a YouTube video. I should probably watch a Greg A video. Dude, I bet, I bet Greg A's got a video. Dude, I bet you Greg A's got a video. <laughs> Way back in the day. But does he have a video about how much you need a topside creeper? Either you love or hate these things, but I'm telling you, they will change your life one way or the other. Because if you hate them, your 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 potential downstairs region might hate you. Some people get lightheaded, but I love topside creepers because if you're gonna like all of our essentials over here, like our monster, our head studs, our Milwaukee ratchets, this is a part of my essential. Like I, I'm not gonna kneel and lay over this junk not happening my man right here got me covered so step number one remove your valve cover get to the head stud so also i wanted to uh also mention like what trucks would i do head studs one at a time um and again it's lower mileage trucks that are already not having an issue if your truck is potentially already even think it might have a head gasket issue this is not going to fix or band-aid any of that problem this is really like super low mile truck you know you're not having a problem you've been driving it you haven't been beating on it like if you bought a truck that supposedly was grandpa uh and it wasn't like somebody's already been beating on it uh probably not a good idea either so again this isn't like my recommendation to to everyone so take that with a grain of salt um, and I'm not saying you need 625s. You could do this same job with ARP 2000s if you wanted to get something better than a factory head bolt. Uh, but I would definitely recommend going with ARP. I, that's, just, that's just my take on it. ARP all the way. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead, pop these valve covers off, get down in there, show you all what you need to remove. Uh, but obviously, Valve covers are easy. We'll go ahead and take those off. And we'll go from there. camera too much just, just farting well got our valve covers off so we've got the upper valve cover the uh, main valve cover and then your rocker box those all come off we'll go over some of that the rocker box actually has to be modified when you go to aftermarket head studs uh, but this is kind of like what your what underneath your valve cover looks like you guys may or may not have seen this we're going we're going a little more basic on this video just to kind of give you guys some in-depth tips and tricks on this specific job um, since it's been a while. So here's what it looks like underneath. And you've got your intake and exhaust rockers. Those will all need to come off. As you can see, these are your factory head bolts. They're not studs, they're bolts. Um, but you, we have them in the middle and you've actually got some underneath of all of the rockers, which we're gonna have to uh, take off. So we're gonna take the rockers off now is kind of where uh some people will do valve springs and push rods as well um i'm still undecided i have the stuff to do it but like i said i have some different plans down the road i think where this is my opinion on valve springs and push rods a lot of people will put an rpm limit on it like so a lot of i can split the crowd kind of in like a hey, I'm never gonna go above like say 600, 650. It's a work truck, it's a tow rig. Head studs will help me with my head gasket, but do I need to spend? I think it's like, I'm not sure what prices are now, but let's just call it a rough to six to $800 on valve springs and push rods. So uh, there's RPM to it, uh, there's horsepower to it. Um, I've, I've moved my threshold up to like if you, are going in there for head studs always do it to kind of like man if you're not really gonna really rpm a whole lot your truck like you know do a lot of burnouts you know have that red needle all the way over in the rpm range and you're not really gonna make a whole lot of power you may not need them it may not be worth it if you have the money and you may have plans and your cylinder head's not going to come off for quite a while 
you might want to go ahead and do them. Um, so that's kind of where I land on that now. So not really required, especially for the lower horsepower guys, the guys that are just using their trucks as normal trucks. Obviously head studs are a little bit different category. It is an extra, pretty big extra step to go ahead and do valve springs. It's not that bad. You are right here. So obviously let's look at this real quick. The rockers, the, your, your bridges, push rods just come in and out. Those are a two second job. Technically we could do those with what we're doing today. Um, and then your valve springs down here uh, are underneath all of that stuff. Now what that requires is you need a valve spring compressor tool um, and it just takes some time, especially the ones in, in the back. So I don't know, we have the stuff, maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't. You'll have to find out, I'm not really sure. But we're gonna go ahead, take these off in order the other thing uh, to note here is take them off in order, label your cylinders one through six. They're gonna be set up different for valve lash. Um, we'll get into valve lash maybe a little bit at the end of the video. Um, usually I check it after I'll, I'll do head studs just because every time you crush it just a little bit, a little bit, it will actually change and tighten up your, your valve lash a little bit. Again, a lot of people get worried about valve lash. It's not that big of a deal, but um, as we do the head studs, and put them back on, we'll kind of see where they're at at the end of the video, so. You know, normally when you have two people, so you don't have to keep getting up and down, it's a real help. <laughs> Hmm. Can you like hold a camera and? Yeah. Really? I don't think you're that good. What? Dang, that was rough, man. Woo! All right, Poppy's ready. Are you really gonna try and do it? Yeah. Wow. That's great. How are you gonna set it down? <laughs> I'm fired. <laughs> I got nothing. Help! Help! <laughs> Oh, and your hands are dirty now, dude. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. What are you going to do? Here, it's for your tears. The normal Greg A. Land, this is normally where... Uh... All right, cool. Let's uh, let's leave this thing apart, and uh, we'll just get the sonar head coming. We'll send the injectors out. And, uh, yeah, next time you guys will see it, it'll be 1,000 horsepower. But we got to take this thing to the gym tonight, and I'm not driving anything else because this is daddy's, this is daddy's rig. <laughs> Maybe something else will be ready for her to drive. What? Not this. What? New mom mobile? Huh? New mom mobile? Megan, Megan to the channel? Take a, take a vote. What should we get Allie for a new mom mobile? Besides this. <laughs> <laughs> That's number two for today. Guys, how, leave a comment down below. How many times do you think I flip Dawson off every video? Definitely more than one, let's put it that way. Anyway, so here's where we're at. Rockers are off, 10 millimeter bolts. Very easy, like I said, keep them in order. You don't, this is, this is really, we're, we're cleared with enough space. And as you can see, the ones that we couldn't get to before are now accessible. Yeah, get that thing off my face. You know, show them the goods down here. So, uh, all of the factory head bolts are now exposed. You don't need to take your injectors out. Like I said, you don't need to take your, your push tubes out. Uh, you can if you want, or if you're replacing them, if you were gonna go ahead and do valve springs, you would. You just need to be careful. Obviously, you can see how much they're sticking up, about the size of, uh, of you probably um sorry that was too much too much i can't help myself i this is just real greg a stuff slide. this is slide <laughs> big andy if you're buddies this this is such a non-technical video and i just don't care if your buddies ever say something that's not really funny and they think it's hilarious or just a joke you just hit them with a the slide literally just say slide slide just lets them know Hey, good try, but it sucked. You know what I mean? So if you have a joke, you give your buddy, just, just say slide. So 
Dawson gets told to slide a lot. Actually, it's probably me. Dad joke. Anyway, back on track here, boys. Here's where we're about to do the head studs. When I say one at a time method, I literally mean one at a time. I start in the pattern that they have you torque them. So one, two, I forget exactly what it is, but you work your way around outside. I don't know if that's right, wrong, or if it matters. It's just the way I do it. Basically bust this loose. We're gonna go ahead and get a vacuum or I've shown you guys the Super Sucker 5000 off Amazon. Really just get a long plastic tube of straw. Get down there with some brake clean, clean that hole out, and then we'll go ahead with our new head stud and we'll tighten them down uh, in sequence, doing them one by one. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of that, but that's how we're gonna go ahead and do them. We're gonna do them one at a time. We're gonna torque the studs. I don't, I don't actually know what factory head bolts are torqued to somewhere maybe in like a hundred foot pound area. I'll probably try and look it up or something, but normally, so ARP 625s are taken up to 150 foot pounds. Normally I will try and match the factory torque on a head bolt and I will still do three sequences up to 150. So whether I start at like say a hundred and then I'll go ahead and go to like 125 and then 150 doing the torques. But I'll try to initially set the 625s to match what factory head bolts are. Yeah, it was about 100. Um, my guess was right. If you look in here, all of the head studs are the same length except for six of them. Those six of the, or those six of them right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. You put the longer ones on the outside. This is actually outside of the valve cover. So put those longer six head studs on the exhaust manifold side outside of the valve cover. Bro, I had it in my hand because I was showing everybody and, you know. for round two and round three. And then we're pretty much done with the head studs. I normally don't do a hot retorque on these. Like normally 150 set it, you're fine. Like you're already crushing a crushed gasket. Like you don't need to kind of worry about getting things moving and then retorquing it. So like hot retorque, not really applicable on here. The other big thing that we have to do, which this is probably, if you take one thing out of this video, is this, when you do head studs on these trucks, I'm pretty sure this is applicable for like 03 and up. This is where a lot of people will uh, not do. I think it's even in the instructions, but this is your valve cover as it sits on the truck. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. Right here, uh, oil leaks happen in the back of the rocker box. You can see right here is our, ooh, that's gonna make a mess. You can see our seal right here. Well, what happens is your head bolt is sitting like this. It has enough room. Well, an ARP gets up into this material. So what you have to do is basically follow this curve, uh, grinder, however you wanna do it. Uh, you basically have to open this completely up because the head stud rides up against this. Now, when you go to install this, it's not gonna be as abrupt and like stop it. You'll actually be able to torque it down, think that it's good, but it is gonna leave a little bit of a gap here in the back, just enough to make a mess and have an oil leak. So uh, that's gonna take a little bit of time to uh, do that. Uh, but other than that, we're just gonna go back uh, and do 125 all the way around, 150 all the way around, grind that, slap back together, and then put our rockers back on and kind of see where a valve lash is at. But other than that, 
Um, again, a little more time consuming, um, but yeah, that's where we're at. Shameless plug of the video. If you haven't bought any Wrenchworks merch lately, you should probably go do that. Also, you should definitely go follow us on TikTok because we make spicy TikToks and they're really funny and it gets people really upset, but uh, you should definitely go watch TikTok. And if you're not on TikTok, go download TikTok. Uh, potential Chinese involvement there, but it's okay, it's funny, it's a good time. What? quick um, I'm not gonna go into super big detail but uh, on your balancer there's a TDC top dead center mark um, found that rotated that around got that straight centered up so with that uh, right now our both of our number uh, one intake and exhaust rocker are loose so that indicates that we rotate or we check valve lash on half of the engine uh, I forget what it is I think it's one two uh four i believe on intake and then it's one three i believe five so look up the order again i might have messed one of those up right now seeing that we're getting it's getting late it's getting weird but with the engine on top dead center as you can see it down right here you'll either be on number one or number six top dead center the, like i said the way you find that out is if both number ones are loose that means number sixes should be tight if you have number sixes that are loose and number ones are tight that means you're on number six top dead center and you would you would adjust the valves per that so what we're going to do now is we were on number one top dead center these are both loose we checked half of the engine right now we're going to go 360 back to top dead center again but that's going to make number six top dead center. So when we do that, number six intake and exhaust will both be loose and we'll adjust or check the second half of the engine like that. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but that's that's how you do it. So honestly, we're checking them. Uh, I was expecting to adjust them because we haven't adjusted the valves from the factory. I think from the factory, they're actually not even close to 10 and 20, but with maybe getting a little extra crush, they're, they're right on 10 and 20. 10 intake, 20 exhaust. really mention and I'm like hesitant to mention but maybe it'll help one of you guys out that's what we're here for anyway so the factory head bolt right here so this and again you can't see it because we I didn't show you I suck but uh, the rocker pedestal a lot of times if you have a hard time getting the intake bolt in your rocker assembly when you're trying to put your rockers down the uh, head stud washer and nut sometimes will rotate when you torque it down and there's just a little bit of extra space around the washer kind of just like an oversized washer and a nut and like if the slack or the extra like tends to ride on this side that will interfere with the pedestal sitting down in your intake bolt uh threading in nicely you can usually thread these in just by hand you don't need to tighten them down if this bolt starts going in tight what you need to do is you need to break that head stud loose and try and get the slack of the washer away from the pedestal towards that way and then sit it back down on there it's if you've ever had it happen you'll know exactly what i'm talking about and if you go to do this job and you're like man i can't get the pedestal to sit like i'm shifting around it's sitting flat uh, and the intake bolt won't go on you need to this head stud in between each one the washer is probably just interfering just the slightest amount break that loose retorque it so the slack kind of gets away from that area and you'll be fine
RIP to the yard. RIP to the yard. Did you get, did you? That's not supposed to happen. You see the yard? Just zoom in on the yard. Oh, oh. gosh. The yard. That is totally. Somebody better call the landscapers. They are going to be mad. Funny thing about the landscapers is. Anyway, boys. <clears throat> That's pretty much it. You should know how to do head studs now. That's a wrap. Thanks for coming by. Hit the like button for relief. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys on the next video. I think there was like there's a, there was like a natural high spot right there. I just needed to take out the bump. That's how we just that's, that's self leveling. That's that's landscape.